Just got it all washed up. It's all ready to go. Filling it up with water right now. We're gonna head out early in the morning. 33 gallons so far. I did a 20 earlier and put some bleach in, so we're at 53 right now. Yeah, got it all nice and clean. Cleaned the roof with a mild Dawn, scrubbed it with a sponge. Washed the sides with the Meguiar's wash and wax. I really like that. <sighs> Looks nice. Ready to go. Even though it says drinking water, I still use my filter. And then I use this cheapy uh, water pressure regulator. I don't want to blow any lines out. And uh, that way we have filtered water in the tank. So that's 37, 38 gallons plus 20 is 58. Let's go look at the gauge. So it shows two thirds full. So we're getting close. And then I'll switch it over to uh, city water and fill the hot water, hot water heater and take the air out of that. So I got the city water on now and uh, hot water is down. So we'll take the air out of there. We don't use this sink much, so this great tank never gets filled up much. So I like using this to take the air out of the lines. You just have to make sure because I had it winterized. I didn't, I didn't put anything in there. I just drained all the water out of everything. I drained the water out of the hot water heater and uh, closed the valves, and then uh, drained all the water out of the rest of the RV. I know we're in Phoenix, but you just never know. We're on the edge of town, so it does sometimes get below freezing. But I don't think it, I don't think it did this year. Looks like we're getting the air out of there. I like to let it run a good while. You don't want any air in there and turn the hot water heater on. Switch it to a cold. Looks like we're good. And then I'll have to clean this out or Mrs. Toy Holland will be mad at me. Even water spots in her sink. Okay, I think that probably did it. Let's check the bathroom real quick. Yeah, that's the hot. A little bit of air. And then I'll prime the water pump before I go here. I think that's good. Okay. We'll switch it back now to um, tank fill, which is like that. And I didn't turn the water off before I did that. That was a mistake. So you always want to turn your water off before you switch these valves because there's O-rings in there. Hope I didn't mess that up. There's not a lot of pressure on there since I got the water regulator on there, but still, I always try to do that and I messed up right there and didn't do it. So we'll finish filling this up and uh, we'll go from there. I, I try not to fill this all the way. So there's 50, but actually there was 41. So it's some of that was the water tank filling up. So I'll probably put about 75 here. We'll see how that is. And then we'll prime up the water pump. So let's check the gauge and it's showing full for the fresh water tank there and these are two 50 gallon tanks so 100 total i know there's not 100 in there yet but those gauges are i'm sure can set for conservative so we're showing 54 but it's probably about 50 right now so i got about 70 in there i did 20 earlier and then put the bleach in and it reset the gauge so we're probably about 70 right now i'm gonna let it go a little bit more Maybe five more gallons, and uh, I think we'll call it at that. And then we'll prime the hot water or prime the uh, water pump inside. We're only going to go four or five nights out at Quartzsite, 
and we can really conserve water. I, I always take a shower every day, but I take a Navy shower, get wet, soap up, and then rinse off, and uh, that works really well. But with 100 gallons, and I never, I have never filled this. It's never even come out of the overflow tank, I don't believe, overflow hoses. And I think they are right over there. I think that's one right there. I'm not sure where they are. I think they're back there. But I think that's it. That says 58 gallons, but it's actually about 52, 53. I think we're going to turn it off right there. So now you have to change it to dry camp, which is this one straight. It's this one dry camp right here. Get the green down. And I'm going to leave this hooked up, but it's not on. In fact, I'll close that valve there. And uh, we'll go prime the water pump. You can hear it running in there. I just turned it on. It always takes a while to get this thing primed up. There we go. I think it's going. So at Christmas time, man, it took me a long time to get this thing primed up. So there we go. Yeah, it's primed up right. You can hear it. There, shut off. So looks like we're good. Cold water, all right. And we'll go prime the sink. Just make sure some air is out of the line. Still hear a little air. I think that's the hot water. And make sure you get that hot air out or air out of the hot water here. We're good. I'll do the shower when we get there. All right, I think that's it. We're ready to roll. Okay, you're my witness. You guys are my witness. I cleaned this sink so there's no water spots. And then we put this in there in case it drips, catches any water. All right, so it's the next day and we're hitching up. And here's a little tip I thought I would share. Uh, keep dust out of your uh, seven pin wire harness uh, I put this plastic bag it's just a freezer storage bag I think then I put two twi twist ties and I tuck it underneath the propane tank under here to keep as much dirt and dust and water out of there as possible so that's really helpful it keeps that looking new and uh, there's no dust in there yeah so as you can see it stays pretty clean that way I've had good luck I've done that ever since I've had a trailer it works great
Average 9.1 miles to the gallon from Phoenix to Quartzsite. 374 a gallon for the high octane. High octane. 89 octane and I had uh, 334 in Phoenix at the Costco in Chandler. Prices are creeping back up again. We're all settled in here at Quartzsite. From Plamosa Road. Like it over here. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit, so it's feel nice out today. I think it's 74 degrees right now. Real nice. Gonna have some pulled pork for dinner. Getting ready to eat. We've got some nice pulled pork here. We're going to have some cucumbers and some potato chips to go with it. Drinking a Modelo. Got some ranch for the cucumbers there. Perfect night. Morning, everybody. Beautiful morning out here. It's about 7.30. First night. I did run the furnace for a few minutes this morning. It was a little chilly in there just to knock the chill off but battery held up good I think we uh, were down to uh, 210 uh, amp hours from 300 so we used about 90 amp hours overnight well from the time we got here which was uh, I don't know we got here around noon yesterday but uh, we didn't do too much and the solar was cranking out some uh, watts yesterday so I think it was around 5 5 30 when the watts started dropping and then we started using the battery so we had a nice uh, wood campfire out here yeah last night I was gonna record it and then I kind of forgot listen to some radio beautiful boy it's nice out take a little walk a little hike a little later Found some of these nice quartz rocks out here. I don't know if these are going to show up very good on the camera, but kind of cool. If you look around, they're all over out here. There's a neat one. Kind of neat. Found a few of them. They're all over if you look careful. Kind of stacked them up here. All right, we're on our fourth day here and it's turned cold and cloudy. It's about uh, noon on uh, 
Thursday. You can see the clear skies over there, so I'm not getting much solar today. Yesterday I got uh, whew, cold wind. So the wind's been blowing about 20, 20 miles an hour straight. So I gotta run the generator to charge batteries. I only had to run it uh, about 20, uh, about an hour yesterday and I didn't really need to do that, but I got about 75 amp hours charged up on my battery just with solar yesterday. I was getting around 330 amps, uh, I'm sorry, 330 watts of uh, charge off the solar panels that I have and uh, that's out of 525 possible. But uh, anyway, uh, these I sit out here to charge and I put those under my truck at night keep the uh, rodents away and uh, I still haven't bought a converter so we're still uh, running the uh, extra battery charger this is kind of a pain to do this so uh, I'll be getting a converter sometime but uh, this is my lithium charger here I didn't have to do this uh, yesterday but since it's so cloudy now I'm trying to get my battery charged back up for the night. Looks like we're going to be been spending most of the day inside. It is chilly out here. That wind's blowing about 20 miles an hour and uh, it's only 1036. I think I said it was noon, but it's only 56 degrees outside. We had a low of about 51 and uh, I almost didn't bring my little propane heater. I'm glad I did now. So I hooked that up a little while ago to knock the chill off in here, but uh yeah, it's chilly and windy out there, so I think it's supposed to be like this most of the day today. I think the wind's supposed to die down tonight, and hopefully we can sit out with a campfire. I don't have much to say. Everything is uh, working pretty good. One of the reasons I'm holding off on that uh, converter is I'm waiting for uh, the newer ones. They say they're, they're updated on Amazon with the new firmware on the 55 amp one. So I'm kind of holding off as long as I can. I think this is our last boondocking trip for a while. We're going down to a Tombstone area, Memorial Day. But uh, this is probably our last uh, boondocking for a while. And uh, so I'm holding off as long as I can to get the updated firmware on the converter. And uh, I think it's around 200 bucks for that. And uh, that will charge the lithium batteries up when I run a generator. Or just obviously shore power um, that's about it for now uh, we'll cut back in later everything's running good um, streaming TV using my hotspot and fridge is working great and with this inverter setup that I have with the 300 amp hour uh, lithium battery this this really is nice having all the outlets run and the microwave really like this setup it's it's it was worth the money you know, worth all the challenges that uh, I've done. One thing I was going to mention is if uh, you do the battery cabinet like this in the 21G through the 28, I would bring it out all the way out here, give you a little more room. That's about another six, seven inches from what I got right here. But that would really help. You might even be able to add another uh, battery. It just gives you more room for all the components. I should have done that, but I, I need every inch of storage I got. So. Anyway, just a little tip there if you're planning on doing this. Still windy and blustery. We had a little few sprinkles a little while ago. Got a little break. And, uh, cooking my dinner. We're having uh, flank steak and uh, some mushrooms and onions. Put that on the tortilla. And pretty good stuff. Running my generator to get the charge. Windy. It's supposed to die down tonight, so we'll see. But they've changed the forecast, and now we got more rain coming in. So, I'm kind of disappointed with that. I spent three hours cleaning this RV the other day with no rain in the forecast, and now there's rain. So, but we'll see. Maybe not. It held off all day, and then it got a little sprinkle a little while ago. Not too bad. Looking good. I love this griddle. I like these blackstone griddles. Been a blustery day. Went for a couple walks and it was a little chilly. The wind was blowing about 20 miles an hour. Man, it was chilly.
All right, I think we're probably going to call this video here. I hope everybody has a good weekend. And uh, take care, everybody. See you later.